I am so excited to sit down and record another podcast for you guys. As always, it's been so long, but this is the Knitspire podcast. I am Kamiko, and today is Wednesday, January 9th, 2019. I can't believe it. So cliche to say that, you know, but whatever. Um, it is flying by. Time just goes by way too fast. And I am the queen of excuses. But as always, like I said, it's been so long since I've recorded a podcast, and we get all comfy here. Um, and I can't podcast when anybody else is around, and for the last two and a half weeks, I haven't had any time to myself, like really, like free time where nobody is around. Um, so I haven't been able to podcast, and I really had all intentions of doing it, but I just couldn't. But I have so much to talk about, so much to share with you, and I hope I don't forget <laughs> all of it, which I probably will. Although I did write everything down, I, I took some quick notes before I started, and um, yeah, I'm hoping to be able to share everything that I wanted to without rushing through it and without making this super, super long, but anyway, I'm super, super, super excited. I realize I do that a lot. I don't know why. Um, I'm super, super excited. Did I say that yet? <laughs> Um, I guess I'm just going to get right into it. So it's been a while, but, and I have been knitting, like I do not have a day that goes by that I don't knit, of course, if you know me. Um, but I don't feel like I have a lot of projects off the needles, but I guess I do. I don't know. Um, I will start with what I do have off the needles, I guess. I showed these to you last time and these are just some short socks. Um, they don't look that short, but they are. They're a lot shorter than I normally <clears throat> um, knit my socks. Hang on one second. I am going to get sock blockers. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. I just got comfortable and then I had to get up again. Story of my life, right? Let's get these guys on sock blockers. Honestly, these sock blockers look huge. But then when I put my socks on them, my socks look huge. So I think my sock blockers are too small. And they look huge, but I don't have like these hulking feet. I don't know. I'm not sure. But the lighting is awesome, as always. <sighs> Sorry about that. But these are <clears throat> just, I don't remember the yarn. Sorry about that. But it is a rustic yarn, obviously a self-pattern, I don't think you'd call it self-striping, it's just like a self-patterning sock, I don't know if you can see the definition, like the, not the definition, but the detail of the pattern, there's like little spots here and there, but they don't match and that's totally fine because they do match at the same time. But yeah, I haven't worn them yet, I haven't blocked them, but I don't really block my socks, I block them as I wear them, I guess you would say. Um, so yeah, those are off the needles. Those are actually, they took longer than it takes me to um, knit a, a top, like a, a longer leg sock because these were my like car knitting socks. <laughs> so I would take them along because I don't really have to think about them. So yeah, they took a while, but that's totally fine. And I actually did a heel flap, the heel flap instead of the... Um, instead of the fish lips kiss heel this time and I had to look it up which is funny because it's actually in my patterns that's how I write my patterns is, um, my own design patterns is with the heel flap but I had to look up how to do it again because <laughs> I never do it anymore anyway yeah that's that um, another finished project is this is yarn if you look if you watched my last podcast I think I talked about how I did learn this past summer how to do brioche and I just did like a, a little practice thing and I showed you I believe that was a cowl but I ended up ripping it apart just because it was totally fine it was practice and I didn't really know where I was in it so anyway I took that yarn which I believe is sugar bush and I made this cowl which looks really weird right now until it's on and so it's like a a mauve purple the lighter color and then the darker color is like a, an aubergine I guess you would call it so it's more like a, a dark purple <laughs> but this is what it looks like on Let's see if I can get it yeah it was just my own pattern I just striped like every f I think four or five rows and I did a, a ribbing 
in each end of the ribbing is the opposite color, as you can see. And hopefully the lighting isn't so bad that you can't see it, but I have the feeling it's not showing up really well. But this is great because I just pull it on when I bring my daughter out to the bus in the morning. And it keeps me warm. It's cute. I like it. That is all I have finished to show you. No, that's not true. I think in the last episode I taught, I showed you a lot of the, the hand dyeing yarn that I did and I talked about one that I had over dyed but I didn't have the, the hat that I knit out of it and here's the hat. I came across it today. So it's just this. Um, this was a, look at that. It's like, it looks like self-striping or self-patterning almost. I dyed this yarn. It was actually an over dyed because the first, um, the first time through it didn't come out quite right. It came out too muddy, but I over dyed it and I'm really happy with it. I would put it on, but as it is, I feel like I just rolled out of bed and I don't want to mess up my hair even more so, and I don't want to wear a hat. But it's really cute. It's just a simple, it looks like the sock head hat, but it's not. It's just my own simple ribbing and then stuck in it, stitched to the end. A little slightly slouchy hat. Maybe I'll put a pom-pom on it. I don't know. Um, so my works in progress, actually, are the, uh, I need a soft blocker. And I don't have a million. I only have two. This is probably not going to work so well because the sock is a little bit bigger than my own socks and he doesn't watch the podcast, I'm pretty sure, but this is for my husband because I've never knit him really anything. I tried, but I didn't. I have, sorry, I have fuzz on me. As happens to podcasters when they're showing off their stuff. Um, so this is just a, the, the yarn is actually from Michael's. It's Lion Brand Sockies, I want to call it, and I forget the name of it. Do I have the tag thing on there? I don't have it. I forget the, the color name, but it's kind of like, if you can't see it, which it looks like you cannot, maybe from back here you can. It's got like, oh, I think it's called Taffy. No, that's not right. Something like that, though. It's got like dark teal browns and like a rusty color in it, and it's I really like it. It's very manly. And, oh, these are going to look terrible because they're way too big for the sock blocker. <laughs> but it's this, it's this sock. I am so sorry about my lighting. That really sucks. Sorry. Oh, I don't know. I, I can't, there is nothing I can do to even remedy the situation. I'm so sorry. I have natural light coming in. I have unnatural light on. I have all the overheads on. It's just not working. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Again, I feel like this is always such a hodgepodge. Someday, someday I will have a setup. Anyway, I'm going to write this up and put it up, this pattern up. It's a, free, it'll be a free pattern cause it's so simple, but so it's got texture in it. It's a basically for three rows, you just knit. And I only did the pattern on the front as I usually do. I usually leave the, the back. Let me take them off. I usually leave the back just in stock in that stitch and then the patterns on the front. So it's a, it's this texture pattern where you knit for three rows and then the third row you go purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one all the way across. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. He does not know I'm really necessarily know. He doesn't necessarily know that I'm making them. He did not see them or at least he didn't pay attention to them. But I said, close your eyes and don't peek and I'm just, and take off your sock because <laughs> that's how you measure somebody's foot. And I put the sock on his foot because I wanted to know where to um, start my do my toe decreases. And he did. He he um, obeyed me. Took off his sock, closed his eyes, and let me put that on. And I said, I was like, don't even, uh, you you have no idea what I'm even doing, right? And he, he just played along with it, I think. But hopefully, I'm pretty sure he doesn't watch this. Like, I don't think anybody I know watches this, like, really. Or if anybody at all watches this, so if you do, hi. And anyway, I did a heel flap on that one too because I wasn't so sure about doing the fish lips kiss heel on him, on my husband, on his socks. And I am this far into the second one. I'm on the, de the decreases for the gusset and <laughs> that's what I got right here. So that is flying by even though they're big because he's got big man feet. That is another work in progress and I'm kind of just plugging along on that because there's no rush on it. 
And another work in progress, I think I showed you this last time because it was a test knit for Mallory of the, um, the Knit and Kitten podcast, who I would like to consider a friend of mine. We talk. <laughs> and um, so I did a test knit for her because she's done a couple for me. I think she's done a couple for me. And um, you can't really see the pattern, but it's gorgeous. And when she releases it, which I don't think she's released it yet, but it's, I think it's called the Farmer's Daughter Sock Pattern, something like that. And I actually plan on making this, these socks in another less busy yarn. And I did consider ripping this one out and using th this yarn for another pair of socks, but it doesn't really matter to me um, that you can't see the pattern great. It, it's really cute. The, the yarn is um, Allegria, and I think it's the cabaret colorway. It's like blacks and white and pink, which I love. I love black and white and pink. And it's like a soft pink too, which is really a cool um, contrast to the black. But the pattern is only on the front and it's just this wavy, wavy pattern that just goes up or down, whichever way you want to look at it. <clears throat> really cute, really fun pattern because it's easy. It's, you know, it's easy, but it's like, you know, you still have to kind of pay attention to it, but it's not like you, something you can't do if you're watching Netflix or, you know, whatever, even in the car. Like I just kept the chart on my iPad and went row by row as I did it. And it was so easy. It's super cute. I have not started the second one just because I really, this was a test knit and I wanted to get the test knit done. And then I had a lot of other things that I was working on. Um, but I definitely will be casting on the second one soon because I cannot stand having only one sock done. It, it's funny because I used to knit and never finish my stuff or never weave in the ends or anything. And now I always finish my projects once I finish it. Like, <laughs> that actually doesn't make sense because I have some long languishing pro projects that have not even seen the light of day that are not finished. But... When I'm working on something, especially socks, I don't have that thing that people call sockitis. I finish my socks. Um, I'm actually considering doing two at a time socks from now on um, because it just kind of makes sense. But yeah, so I will be starting that soon. And this is the ball. <laughs> Can someone explain this fun phenomenon to me? I don't do a center pull. Well, it is a center pull, but I actually work from the outside. And I did not like unwrap this and, t and then wrap it back together. This is what happened. And it's been happening a lot lately. And I think it's my new ball winder and I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but it is a big hot mess, just like me. So, you know, it matches, whatever. But that's what happens. It's look, look at it. <laughs> just look at it. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> and I'm afraid that it's gonna come apart, but I don't wanna rewind, re, re, I don't want to wind the ball again. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what else am I working on? Okay. So if you follow me on Instagram, which by the way, I did not tell you where you can find me, but everything is in the information box below this video. You can, you know where to click, um, where you can find me. And if worse comes to worse, just leave a message in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you anyway. Anyway, Back to our programming. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I have, I cast on the Rizzo blouse. I don't even think I had dyed the yarn for this in the last podcast, but I had this vision of like a tonal light pink, hot pink with little pieces, little spots of white in there. And I dyed up the yarn and I'm so happy with the yarn. And again, this happened with this ball yarn too, where it, it's like, I don't know what's happening. And this, I'm actually doing a center pull. Here, this, the pull, the center is right there. Yeah, I haven't wrapped it or anything. This one, I probably will use the ball winder and wind it up again because here is the item. <laughs> this is the Rizzo blouse by Poison Girls on Ravelry. Gorgeous, gorgeous sweater. Check it out. I'll try to insert a picture, but usually that doesn't work because my computer doesn't like me doing that or my my editing program doesn't like me doing that for some reason. This is my version of it. I don't know what I was doing. I'm, I know I wasn't drinking that much. <laughs> There's a little bit of wine involved, but 
not enough to do this. This looks, I mean, similar to the pattern, but okay. So it's a, uh, it's not giving anything away because you can see it in the pattern. It's it, it's a nice cropped short sleeve sweater. Super super cute. Um, it's it's there. I go again. <laughs> Clapping. Um, it's so. It's a really cute sweater. It's got seed stitch. It's got a V that goes, a deep V that goes down with it that separates, that is separated from stockinette stitch and inside the V is seed stitch. And the thing that separates it is these little eyelets, I guess you would call it. Yeah, I think that's what she calls it in the pattern. And it, that look, that's coming out great and everything. But the V on it is not as deep as it should be. And I could tell as I started to only do the stockinette stitch that something was wrong. And... Right now, it just looks like a mess. Um, I don't know what I did. I can follow directions. I can read. I don't know what happened. And so, yeah, I put it up on my Instagram, and the consensus was basically to just frog it and start over again, which is fine, because um, I probably will do it correctly the next time. If I don't, then I will contact her again, because I already had a problem with it, and I contacted her. Um, and she was so helpful. I love when you can talk to the um, pattern designers and they respond to you quickly. Because, I mean, I do the same thing. Or when I do test knits, I try to do the same thing. Um, and, well, here's the back of it. You can see. if I think you can see this in the light. It, it is pretty bright. It's I think it's as bright as it looks in the on screen. I love it, though. Let me just check my time. Okay. Um, but... Oh, I'm so frustrated because it's not, it doesn't look like the picture. And plus it looks messy. And I never, I don't, I'm a big, um, like sock knitter lately, as you know, but I mean, I can knit a sweater. I've done that before. Um, I just feel like, like as I'm knitting, it just looks so messy. And I think that's the turnoff for me is that there's, you got this hanging here, this, these on live stitches on a holder or on other needles, um, just it's just a big mess like story of my life <laughs> it's just a big messy mess of messness so this I'm probably going to no not probably I'm definitely going to be frogging this which is sad but that's okay it's a learning experience so that is on my needles right now but it will be off my needles soon so yes that's the Rizzo blouse by Poison Girls. I believe that's who it, it's by, Poison Girls. Okay, and another project that is still on the needles, and I'm not going to show you because there hasn't been no progress, is the Jelly Roll socks, and I showed them to you last podcast, I believe, and they are, I used leftover yarn, scrap, kind of scrap yarn. I still had a lot left over from my uh, Tady Lady socks and from my Stella Bella Honey socks. So I took those two yarns and then each sock, so you use both co two colors in those socks and I flip flop them in each sock so they're opposites, which is really cool. Can't wait to finish those, but um, there was a little too much brain power going into it. And lately, like always, I don't want to put brain power into anything. So I just like want to do stock and stitch and that's not quite stock and stitch, but I want to finish it. Um, not even going to show it and I didn't even want to dig it out because there's just been no progress on it. But I have a lot of items or a lot of projects from last year that are kind of like these, like these socks and the jelly roll socks. I just want to get off the needles and finish them. Cause like, especially with socks, as I told you, I like to just finish them because I want to wear them, um, which I will talk about soon, but upcoming, I, speaking of things that are, are on the needles from last year is and I think this is actually from 2017. <laughs> um, the Speckle and Pop shawl by Stephen West, because if you do watch the podcast way, way back when I was trying to finish it, my needles broke. So I got those replaced, um, I think in like August this year, I went back to the, the local yarn store that I had bought them at and she replaced them for me. But it's a daunting project. Um, only because it's just, there are so many stitches on the needles. Um, I definitely want to finish it though. And like the biggest reason I want to finish, cause I don't even really like the shawl. It's cool. It'll be fine. It's, it's, um, it's a fun shawl. So I do like it, but it's just eh, whatever. The biggest reason I want to finish it is one to have the needles back and two to get the 500 
stitch markers back. <laughs> I even bought brand new stitch markers for it, just like the little plastic locking ones. They look like little locks, I think. I just want to use those. I'm so excited to use them, the simple things in life. Um, I just want those back, but I do want to finish the shawl and it'll look really cool. Um, so that is what I'm going to be finishing too. I'm just going to take it out and just like, for lack of a better term, balls to the wall <laughs> and finish it. And then I, you also know that I dyed yarn for the comfort fade party because I did that about a year ago and I have not finished it. I did the body of it and it looks great and everything. I don't like the, um, the dye job that I did. So I am going to just completely frog that one over dye the yarn and then knit it up again. I'm thinking like black and purple. Like I think that would look really cool. Um, yeah. What I think I might do is do a video of me frogging the Rizzo blouse and then a video of me frogging the comfort fade cardi because nobody else cares about that. But I think in the knitting world, that would be deeply satisfying to watch somebody else rip all of that out. And it, you know, I am a process as much as a product knitter. So it really doesn't bother me to do that, to, to take it all apart. Cause you know what, if I'm not happy with it, I won't wear it. And if I put all that time into it, I'd rather put double time into it and actually wear it and, and enjoy it, you know, than put just half the amount of time into it, like what you're supposed to put into it and never wear it. So, you know, and I'm sure my taste will change anyway in the future, but I want to wear them. The point of me knitting them was to wear them. So I'm going to wear them, even if it means taking them apart. So those are my two upcoming, as well as uh, you know, constantly, I always have socks on the go. I have, um, my patterns. I have one more pattern to write up and knit, um, which I still haven't done for my, um, Sweet Child of Mine series. But also I'm always looking for test knitters because I have a lot of plans this year. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, yeah. So upcoming blah, 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 blah. Another thing that I've been working on, it's kind of under whips, but this is completely different than like my knitting with, um, like my nice stuff <laughs> is if you've followed, if you've been following me on Instagram, I did actually start a new Instagram and it's not really for me. It's just for upcoming plans. And I will be honest with you about it. I plan on selling some stuff, you know, I, it's, there's no shame in that. Um, I, I have some issues <clears throat> that kind of go back to my past. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about it, but, um, just some issues with putting myself out there, even though, which is weird because I put myself out there every day, but as far as like selling stuff, um, there's not a lot of privacy. Anybody can watch me. Anybody can follow me. Um, and there are people that, um, might have issues with it, but they're not in my life. They're toxic. And <laughs> Yeah, you know, everybody knows that everybody has issues with other people and like, I don't have the issues on it. I mean, it might seem like I do, but I don't, it's their issues with me. And I know that for a fact because I do. Anyway, I could edit that one out, but I probably won't. Um, so I've been making a lot of toques or as we call it in Canada, toques. Um, I'm American though, so I call them hats <laughs> or beanies or whatever. And I've been making a lot of them in order to sell them because people like them. And I live in Canada and you need a, a toque like eight months out of the year, depending on where you live. We don't, um, you know, we have normal winter like New England, which is where I'm originally from. So, but yeah, people want toques and stuff and they're fun to make. God knows I have the time. I don't work. <laughs> I can't work. Um, or I don't work. Um, cause I'm very privileged in that way. Thank you, my husband. Uh, wow. Rambly. Sorry. But so this is a sample of some of the ones I've been doing and I'm showing you these because they're super freaking cute. Like the adult hats aren't so much fun, but the, the baby hats are so cute. And it's just this simple, super simple little cable. Like These are obviously newborn hats because look how tiny they are. They're just super tiny, but obviously I'm making bigger ones too. They're so cute. I even sold a couple, not of these, but I sold a couple to some local, um, acquaintances. They're not friends, I guess, but they're acquaintances. Um, and if they're watching, hi, <laughs> Jackie and Katie. Um, yeah. So they bought some for, 
for themselves. Um, not these sizes because they don't have tiny, tiny babies. But yeah, these are just samples of what I've been working on. And then I have, um, you put this, sorry for the noise. I, I hate the crinkly myself, so I'm really sorry. But little hamsters, they're not hamsters. They're little pom-poms. Um, and people cannot resist these pom-poms and I get it now. Oh my gosh. Look, um, let's see here. This matches. I'm going to put this on it. Look how cute. Well, that's not on it. Great. But look how freaking adorable that is. You throw a pom-pom on it and everybody just like swoons over it. Like They're so cute. And I know they're so cliche, like the little fluffy pom-pom, but come on, everybody likes them. And I have the, the pom-poms to put on. Yeah, so I've been doing that, um, and I haven't really set up any, like, spot Shopify or Etsy or Facebook store or anything yet, but I will. I'm getting there. I'm a big procrastinator. Um, there's issues with that. There's, like, I don't know. I don't know what that is all about. Anyway, that's what I've been, a big thing I've been working on. Also, um, and before, uh, right after I did my last podcast, I think it was that day, actually. I don't even think I had put that podcast up yet, but I, um, I was think I was feeling extremely disorganized. I think I came across, I think I even talked about it in the podcast where my yarn was just everywhere and I don't have a lot of places to, to even store yarn. So that made it an even bigger issue. And so under our bed in our bedroom, our bed actually lifts up and there's storage underneath it. But that's really, it's kind of difficult to get to it because I don't, I don't know what, what the problem is, but there's nothing to like hold the bed up. And as you can imagine, holding up wood with a mattress on top of it is a feat for like, not somebody who's my size and my strength. Like my husband can do it. He, you know, he, he's Mr. Muscles, but not me. So, but I did it because he wasn't even home. So I, I lifted the, the, <laughs> the mattress up. I think at some point I held it up with my head. Uh, it was, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I took all my yarn out from there, which was a lot of yarn for me, threw that on my bed and literally threw it on my bed. And I do have a picture, but like I said, I'm having a hard time when I edit inserting pictures. So I can't even, I don't, I don't even think I'm going to show you. And the picture does not do it justice, the, the mess that it was. And then I had yarn, I have a table over here and there's yarn in baskets under there. I threw all that on the bed organize the yarn. I, I miss, I completely underestimated it as I always do. I under, I underestimate everything, the time that it would take to do, to organize it, but I did get it organized and I'm still, I'm starting to feel a little bit messy again, but it's actually still organized. And I know like the, these are, the, this is the yarn for my toques that I'm going to make. This is the yarn that is more expensive yarn. That is a better quality yarn or a, a better quality yarn for lack of a better term. Um, and this is yarn for my, my scrap blankets. And this is bear yarn that I can dye. And this is this yarn, you know, just stuff like that. I got, I took all my projects out of their project bags. I don't have a lot of project bags. My project bags are like the Ziploc bags. You, you can see your project in it. So that works for me. Um, I took all my notions. It turns out I stole a lot of pens from myself. Um, probably about 20. <laughs> I took everything out of their bags, everything out, reorganized everything. So all my notions are in one little basket and then I can just grab what I need, um, in a project bag. All my project bags are empty except for one of them. Plus the two that I, <laughs> the two that I have, um, my, my socks on and that my Rizzo blouse was on. Um, just reorganized everything completely and it felt so good. I, I did throw away a lot of stuff, nothing like yarn or anything, but just like old gross projects that I thought I was going to get to, but we have lived here for over nine months now and I never got to them. So before that in our, in the house that we were living in, they have been sitting around for over two years. So if, if it's been, if it's coming up on three years and they haven't been touched and they're nothing that I'm proud of, just get rid of it. Right. You know, Marie Kondo the heck out of it, right? You know what I'm talking about. So I organized all that, and um, I feel really good about that. Now I can buy more yarn. No, I can't. I don't have the space for it. I or or the bank account. Well, that's not true. I don't want to spend the money on it just because I don't have the space for it. It's not practical. And when I have too much of a stash, I it makes my head crazy. 
you know, I don't need any more crazy in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a little bit more organized. I know that I have stash to, to grab from because I'm basically going to make socks unless it's like a specific project and I dye yarn for it or I buy a large quantity of yarn for it, which I don't really do anyway. Um, yeah, so I did that. That felt good, I, all organized and stuff. Um, so that is that. And I'm going to be a little bit of a dork here. Um, I'm, I was very <laughs> jealous of everybody's advent yarn calendars. I think that's amazing. And I did consider buying one this year because I would just have to purchase it myself. <laughs> um, but I didn't because one, because I have so much yarn and I didn't want to add to that stash and not use it and just have it sitting around two, because they are expensive and I didn't, I'm not one to treat myself to something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. If, yeah. So I, it, it's hard for me to do that. I feel like I spend enough money on myself as it is, as, as far as that stuff. So I didn't buy one. I was like, you know what? Next year, it'll be something I'll work toward. I will go through my stash that I have now, <clears throat> use that stuff up. And the next year I'll buy something. But then I've been thinking, I'm going to be a little, like I said, I'm going to be a little dorky about this. What I think I'm going to do is take yarn that I already have. Cause I do have a lot of scrap yarns. Um, from other like old sock projects or whatever that is just sitting around and I think I'm gonna make them into minis I'm not even sure how big like 10 or 20 20 grams is a lot so maybe 10 grams not 5 grams I want a little bit more than that so like maybe 10 gram minis and wrap them all up and have 24 of them and just maybe have my husband put them in or maybe a project for my daughter have, wrap them up, put them in bags and wrap them up and then like number each of them so that I have something to grab from and it'll be a surprise every day next, next December. I think that would be a really cool idea. And then also throughout the year, <clears throat> excuse me, buy like, as I buy, um, like a regular full size skein of yarn, um, put a bunch of those together and just like, don't even look and grab that and put and wrap that up also so that on the 25th day, I have this surprise ball of yarn <laughs> to um, open. I think that would be a really cool idea. Like, I, I know there's like the fun of having an advent calendar that you have no idea what's in it. I think that would be really cool. Like, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do both. Maybe I'll buy an advent calendar and then also make my own little dorky advent one. But I think that would be so cool, right? Like, I think that would be so much fun. Maybe do the wrapping at the end of November or something and give my daughter like a little project to do. Um, but yeah, the more and more I think about it, I think that would just be a fun little thing to do throughout the year and like have little minis to wrap up or to, to wind up knowing that they're probably going to be in my dorky little advent calendar. That is a plan, right? That sounds, that sounds like fun. Like why not? Like why spend two, three hundred dollars? That makes my heart like skip a beat just thinking about it. Um, when I can, when I have all the yarn and it would still be surprising, right? Cause you look through your stash and you're like, Oh, I didn't even know I had that. This is getting longer than I would like it to be. <laughs> so, um, oh, and I, sh I shared with you my crazy story about my Chiago needles last time and they're working out great, but I still open up the, the case Oh, it's right here. I still open it up and see the whole the bare side of it and I, I would like to fill it with the larger size needles um, because with larger projects I am using larger needles but look at that oops you can see actually I'll do it this way these are obviously some of them are in use but that's like it's empty like what's up with that that's it's a little um, unfulfilling actually so I'm very willing to spend some money on needles um, I, it's just a matter of getting out to local yarn stores and on that note, yeah, so I'm still, I'm searching for needles. If you have any, um, suggestion on needles, let me know, but I'm happy with the Chiagos. I like them. Um, I did look, but yes, on the note of yarn stores, local yarn stores, I kind of did a little search about yarn stores in my area. And there are quite a few within a, like a one, one mile, I wish a one hour area of where I live, like going an hour in any direction, there's a good amount of yarn stores for me to, um, to visit. So it's just, it's hard for me 
to get out because we live so far out in the country. Like we live 18, I, I think the road is like 18 kilometers from the highway and the highway is eight, like another, like at least 14 to 16 kilometers from the city. So it is, it is a, a big drive and my husband does a lot of driving anyway. We only have one car. So to put the kilometers on the car is, is hard for me to do and. It's, it's we're, as I'm not busy, it's still busy because he's out and then, yeah, it's hard to explain. <laughs> I mean, we, it's not like we don't have anything like the, gro there's a couple grocery stores down the road that are, um, they're not that far away. It, it takes like 10 minutes to drive to them, but that's all there is. There's like grocery stores. They don't even have like, they don't sell tofu or mock meat there. So <laughs> like they kind of suck. Not that I always use that stuff, but sometimes it's nice to grab that stuff. There's another grocery store and like a small town the other way, but again, it takes a good 15 to 20 minutes to get there and there's nothing else out there besides a Walmart and a Canadian Tire and a Dollarama. So there's no yarn stores out that way. Anyway, I'm getting off topic and I think I am going to pause that for a second. All right, I have to pause every 20 minutes or so because the camera will turn off, as you know. And I'm rambling. Um, but yes, I have yarn stores in the area that I have to visit. I'm not unwilling to drive more than an hour. I mean, we drive, my husband drives an hour, uh, over an hour to work anyway, to get to his jobs. So that I'm on the search for needles and the search for great yarn stores. Yes. And there, I have so much more. I still have to talk about. I can't turn the page. Uh, da, 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 da. So another thing, um, you know what, I'm going to save this for another episode. It'll give me some content. I do have to, um, give a little shout out though to Knit Picks. I made a big order with them recently, um, which I will talk about also in another podcast. Um, and there was a big, huge problem, like a lot uh, that ended up costing a lot of money. It was a big problem that had to do, and it had to do with customer service and two people that I talked to on the phone. Well, finally it got sorted out yesterday with a third person that, that ha who had to include a manager and as turned off as I was with their customer service up to that point, they completely changed my mind about them. And I know people, I've heard some complaints about net, net, Netflix, wow, nitpicks in the past. Um, and they have restored my faith in them. They gave me great customer service yesterday. They resolved the problem and it made, it made me want to go back to them. They have really good prices on yarn. Even, um, when you do the currency conversion, which really sucks. I really hate Canadian dollars. I hate it. It's, it doesn't even make sense. It's so stupid, but the conversion anyway, with the conversion, they still have pretty good prices. Um, so it restored my faith in them to use them in the future. So hi, nitpicks. Not that they would ever, anybody from nitpicks would ever watch, but I just wanted to give a little shout out to them. So if you've ever had a problem in the past, their customer service does come through. I'm used to dealing with Amazon's customer service, which is like stellar. And you know, sometimes it just depends on who you talk to, but yes, nitpicks definitely came through yesterday. So <clears throat> Another thing I wanted to share, this is actually, you can see, I just light up. So, you know, I knit lots and lots and lots of socks. That's just all I did. And I was knitting all these socks for like two years and I never, ever wore them. Well, now that we live out here where we live, um, it's cold. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cold. And you know, um, without getting, uh, this is something I'm going to explain in another episode about where we live, but it gets cold. And I was like, you know, I'm going to start wearing my socks because they're wool socks. I, I've never worn wool socks before, so I don't know like what the difference is. I started wearing them and oh my gosh, not only are they super adorable and like I have boots that they come above. So like when I go out, you can see like the top of my socks and my socks are just crazy. They don't match my outfit, which I don't care about because they're fun. They're socks. They're just separate from the, um, the rest of the outfit kind of. Anyway, I started wearing them and I am so proud of my socks. I actually ended up taking all, and this had to do a lot with my organization that I did a couple months ago because a lot of my socks were still packed away, which is super sad. They were all scrunched up. Ugh, it was awful. They were so sad. 
I took all my socks out, made a big pile of them. And if you follow me on Instagram, <clears throat> you will have seen the pile a couple of months ago. But I did, I didn't like, like formally take part in the box of socks cal. Like I didn't enter it into the giveaway or anything, which kind of sucks. But um, I'm not up on my game ever. I have a lot of socks from this year. And basically, these are my socks, and I'm so proud of them. So these are, and I do, I still have some in the that are in the laundry because I actually wear my socks now. It's super exciting. These are all, let's see, these are from last year. These are from last year. And so is this one. These are all from last year. Look at this mess. Sorry. And then these are, this box right here, let's just slow replace this one plus these <laughs> are from this year and I know I have others like I said there's some in the laundry and did I knit any socks for anybody this year I think I only knit one pair for my sister-in-law that I don't have obviously but these are my socks from this year and they're so lovely and one two three four of them are my own pattern five of them. One, two, three, four, five. I have five patterns out. Well, they're not released. I only have one released. Five of them are my own pattern. Two of them are just plain knit socks. One of them is from the Tour de Sock. And two of them are test knits. Um, so yeah, I'm just really super proud of my socks. And I just wanted to show them. I've shown them all before, but like, oh, and yeah, there's, these are the Arnie and Carlos. Or... The Perfect is that the same thing? These are a perfect so pair of socks. These, these, they're just all so great. I love them. Oh, and these, I don't know. I made, I knit these in 2017, and me, I don't not. Fin I always finish my projects now, but look at, I didn't, I didn't even weave that in. I don't know what that's all about. This sock is not woven in. And it's so sparkly. And I wish I knew the yarn. I know there are Dumbledore socks. I wish I knew what yarn it was. I don't even remember. I don't even remember buying it. But it's sparkly. And that's my only sparkly yarn. And I need more sparkly yarn because they're so sparkly. And I want to wear them because they're sparkly. I would like to dye that yarn that has Stellina in it. I'm going to sneeze. Nope, I'm not going to sneeze. It's just my nose now. Um, more socks. More socks. Anyway, I just wanted to share all my socks. <laughs> and yeah, Oof, I am tired. So just, I just want <clears throat> to kind of wrap this up in the next few minutes, talk about some podcasts. So I did talk about a lot of podcasts in my last podcast about other podcasters. I said podcast a lot in that sentence. Uh, I talked about Dog Dare podcast with David, and I had gotten in touch with him since my last recording, and I've talked to him back and forth a couple of times, and oh my gosh, he's so sweet. He is, he seems, just as sweet as he is in his podcast, and I have no reason to believe that he's putting on airs or anything. He is just a, such a nice guy. Oh my gosh. And it was so cool to talk to him back and forth. I love I've actually been putting myself out there a little bit more and talking to podcasters and commenting on their stuff just because they're people too. Like, they're not untouchable. They might be, like, well-known and stuff, but they're not... They're still people. Like, I've talked to them, and when they like a comment or whatever on Instagram, or if they reply to you to a question that you send a message from, it's awesome. And I, you know, it's just this tiny little knitting world, but to me it's this big world, and it's huge to me. So... Anyway, David from the Dog Dare podcast, I talked to him and that was really great because he's just super sweet. Not that he's watching this, but hi, David. <laughs> um, and I also enjoyed everybody's Vlogmases. There's still a couple that I have to catch up on just the last few days of Vlogmas. I would have loved to do Vlogmas, but my life is so uneventful. Like, hey, I'm walking to the bus. Hey, I'm washing the dishes. Uh, I really don't have much to share, so I did not do a Vlogmas. I just didn't, but I enjoyed everybody else's. I love seeing other people's, other knitters' lives and, like, what's going on behind the scenes and stuff. So, yeah, 
And I just discovered her. Well, I just discovered her, but I've heard of her before. So Meg from Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. She is... I just started watching her yesterday, and I think I'm like four episodes into it already. And I love her. Her energy, her style. She likes color. She's creative and stuff. I really enjoy her. So if you haven't checked her out, which you probably have, check her out. She's great. Um, and also this is not a knitting podcast or a yarn or fiber podcast by any means, but I was, there's a girl that I follow. She's a young girl and she is full of wisdom, like crazy. So I, she's just, I don't know, you know, one of those people. I follow her and because I follow her, ooh, I did not time this one, because I follow her, other things come up in my YouTube to watch. So I checked one out and at first I was like a little like, you guys, that's interesting. But I started watching them and it's this family that lives in the States somewhere, I'm not sure. And they homestead. And if you don't know what homesteading is, look it up because I can't really explain it. but. It's interesting to me. It's an interesting lifestyle. Not really my cup of tea, but to watch it and to watch this family and what they do and and stuff. I, I'm not going to say it like other people say, oh, I can never do that because you do what you have to do. They choose this lifestyle, so that's, that's it's not like they have to do it. It's really interesting to watch them. The podcast is called, it's not a podcast, the channel is called thousands of roots and it's a family of six children so a family of eight and they homestead so I guess they're off-grid and they just do everything for themselves like their their water their electricity they have internet so I'm not sure how that is homesteading but they're not Mennonites or anything they just yeah and they live such a simple lifestyle and the kids are the mother she's got six kids like ranging from a teenager down to a baby she has the patience of a saint like where did she come from I don't know her kids are very well behaved they're still kids you know kids are great they're a pain in the butt though you know that <laughs> I love my kids but um and she the just the the way she treats her children, the way they treat her, the kids, the thing is, the kids aren't on iPads and tablets and phones and YouTube and Netflix and inside and watching a screen all day long. Not that my kid is. She does it more than I would like her to do it, but um, some kids more so are, they don't have a tablet in front of them all the time. And so do I, like we all do, I think not all of us, I can't sp speak for you guys, but a lot of people are just in front of a screen all the time. And I, I do the same thing. I have my phone and I'm like constantly on my phone and I try to just put it down and be present. It's hard because we just have these things. But anyway, this family, the kids go outside, they invent things, they play games, they they look for wildlife. They know how to do chores. Like kids should do chores. They need to grow up and be responsible men and women and husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever they need. To, they're going to take care of a family at some point. They need to learn how to do it when they're young. And it teaches them to be respectful women, respectful men toward each other. Even she's bringing up her boy to be respectful toward women. She's bringing her, her little girls up to know how to take care of a home. And that might sound traditional and like not feminist at all, but like, um, you know, I'm not a feminist. We have traditional roles. I'm like, yes, I'm all for strong, empowered women. And you know, we're important too, but so are men, men and women are both equally important there. I'm sick of this whole man bashing thing that people and like all this equality stuff. It's like, we are already equal. I don't ever feel unequal to my husband. He has his, things that he excels at. I have my things that I excel at. I can't lift 300 pounds. He can, you know, like whatever. I'm not supposed to. I'm small. He's big, you know, whatever. But he can change a diaper. He can wash dishes. I can help with stuff on the house and building stuff. Um, you know, anyway, rant over. This family is just a beautiful family. So if you are interested in that kind of thing, um, thousands of roots, it's one zero 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 S.
so it's not spelled out one that I'll, I'll put it below thousands of roots there it, it's just interesting it's not something I would do I'm not gonna say I could never do that but the thought of living off-grid is amazing anyway I've ranted long enough check them out if you want to if that's something that you're interested in as far as non as modern stuff goes, <laughs> I do watch um, a lot of Netflix, so I'm still watching Gilmore Girls, and I hope I didn't come across as, like, I, I think the show was awful last time, because I said, oh, the acting is this and this and that. I could never act, so the fact that these people are even actors that people know about, that's great. So, like, the acting, it's just a little, the show's a little cheesy, but it's such a comforting, cozy show, I feel like, if that makes sense, but I'm still watching Gilmore Girls, love that. I'm near the end, I feel like it's wrapping up, um, and I, I know that they did like a reboot like the last couple years or so. I haven't gotten to that yet, so I can't wait to see what their lives become like. I think it's something like that. I don't know. I also restarted watching Friends because I finished, I, I think in the last podcast I started, I was talking about how I watched, I was rewatching The Office such a great show and I had never seen the last season and I totally bawled my eyes out in the last episode just because they just executed that show so well it was it was great um so you need like a fun show to watch so I was, I was like hey let me watch friends and oh my gosh I think I've seen every episode of friends anyway but to watch it again in just in order because you'll catch a show here and there if you have it on cable or something such a great show and I noticed on Netflix that, I think I even mentioned her earlier in the episode, Marie Kondo, who did the, she wrote the book, The Secret of, something about tidying up, the life-changing something about tidying up, basically about minimizing your life and getting rid of everything that does not spark joy in your life. Anyway, I guess they made it into a TV show, and uh, I haven't watched it, but I cannot, I will watch it, because I am going to love that. I love tidying up and getting rid of things. I hate clutter, even though I am surrounded by it, but it is mentally overstimulating. It's crazy, so I cannot wa wait to watch that show. Also, um, a show that I started listening to as a podcast, um, because Katie from Inside Number 23 recommended it. She recommended the podcast, and then she said that Amazon Prime picked it up as a TV show, is Lore, L-O-R-E. And I enjoyed the podcast. I only listened to a few of them, and then I started watching the show. And it's pretty cool. I like the narration of it, and then I think one season into it, they stopped having Aaron Minky, they stopped having him narrate it, which I don't like as much, because he kind of explained it a little bit more. But um, it's a pretty good show. I guess it's supposed to be scary or creepy to some people. I, I think there's something wrong with me. I don't get scared at stuff anymore. I thought I did up until this year. Now, like, things are not scaring me anymore for some reason. Like, we even started watching Annabelle, and I was like, oh, that's that's kind of creepy, whatever. And then, like, at some parts in it, but then I was like, yeah, whatever, it's a doll. Everybody hates dolls. Whatever. <laughs> and it's not even real. Don't get me started. Anyway, I feel like I have rambled a lot and talked about stuff that um, is completely irrelevant, but that is just me. I hope to be back in a few days because somebody pointed out that to do a podcast, you really should be there every week or every two weeks or at, on a schedule. It doesn't have to be every week, every two weeks or something. It should be on a schedule because it's like meeting your friend for coffee. If you tell your friend you're going to meet them for coffee, you don't stand them up. You be you be there you meet them you you're gonna be there so I've had that in the back of my head and you guys I don't know you I'm just talking to a camera right now um but it's fun I enjoy sharing my life and I know you know I've talked to a couple people that have watched the podcast so you know this is me this is my I'm having fun with it like I've said before I will be here again <laughs> really soon and if not I think my plan is to just get some little short videos here and there so I can just put some kind of content up. Anyway, thanks for dealing with me and um, all that stuff. My throat is starting to hurt because I'm talking so much and I never talk a lot. So you take care, you have fun knitting and have fun in your life and be awesome and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.